Today we begin our journey at a dilapidated jetty that lays half submerged in the paralyzingly cold waters of Skyrim's Sea of Ghosts. We are in the far northwest corner of Skyrim, not too far north from Skyrim's border with High Rock. An ominous castle juts out from a secluded island that sits undisturbed in the distance. Unfortunately, we left our boots of water walking at home today, leaving the small boat docked at what's left of this jetty as our only way across. My Breton blood leaves me with less chance of surviving the swim than a skirmish with the denizens of Castle Volcahar, and I'm not paying the ferryman 500 gold. Within the well-fortified castle walls ahead live the Volcahar clan. For beings who exist in a permanent state of undeath, these vampires are certainly living it up. Platters of human flesh loaded onto the dining tables of the decorative main hall are scoffed down joyously, followed only by the sweet nectar that is human blood. Vampire cattle are laid out on each table for such feeding, and obedient undead canines known as death hounds patrol the area, perhaps eager for whatever scraps their masters may throw their way. But on this adventure, we are not exploring the deep lore of vampires. There is another entity who makes this castle home, a monster who prefers the solitude of the abandoned castle ruins and the lonely North Tower. What's going on? Welcome to Fudge Muppet, my name is Michael, and today I'll be returning as our very own monster hunter, yet again to guide us safely through the most perilous places of Skyrim, uncovering everything possible about another one of Tamriel's least understood monstrosities, gargoyles. If you were to ask any Nord strolling through a town or city, what kind of monster lays in wait perfectly still with an almost ancient patience for its next victim to wander into its lair? They would undoubtedly declare that you must be thinking of a giant frostbite spider. Such a view goes to show how blissfully unaware most of Skyrim's inhabitants truly are. For a land filled with barbarous bandits, heinous hagravens, and many other foul foes, the citizens of Skyrim will almost never encounter the most wretched types of all. Entities such as Wisp Mothers end up as mere subjects of folklore, with sightings being not only rare but often dismissed entirely. Scholars not only debate the origin of many of Skyrim's monsters, but sometimes even the idea of their existence altogether. In Fourth Era Skyrim, some monsters do not seem to be talked or written about at all. In the case of gargoyles, an entity whose hulking frame and relentless ferocity can surprise even the most perceptive of adventurers, it makes them such a unique subject to explore. A loading screen added by the Dawnguard DLC describes gargoyles as magical creatures that can form a stony skin when stationary, making it easy to mistake them for a statue. Their claws are able to absorb health from their victims. It's a neat summary of the main traits that make gargoyles unique. However, as objective as you'd expect Skyrim's loading screens to be, they tend to provide surface level simplifications rather than spoil the deeper truths we must learn for ourselves. For example, the Falmar are also referred to as creatures, twisted evil creatures, in fact, that dwell in Skyrim's deepest reaches. It says, they have but one desire, to destroy the surface world and any who dwell above. Of course, we can call all kinds of things creatures, but as a fellow Elder Scrolls lore enthusiast, you likely know that there's much more to the Falma foes found in Skyrim. They are descended from the once mighty Snow Elves, a race of myrrh that devolved into corrupted beings after being enslaved by the Dwemer thousands of years prior to the Fourth Era. Hagravens are also referred to as creatures on one of Skyrim's loading screens, but of course, we know their origin is more complex. They were witches who decided to undergo a ritual to achieve greater power and a new form in doing so. But compared to most other entities in the Elder Scrolls universe, the truth behind gargoyles is not so easy for the Dragonborn to discover. There's not a single text in Skyrim that explains these beasts. In fact, across every Elder Scrolls game, there is only one book that attempts to do so, written by Paul Bertolitumly, an author who featured as far back as the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Here he was not writing about creatures, but rather a humorous story involving a bet. It's called Banker's Bet, give that one a look if you dare. He also wrote The Locked Room, a tale of a lockpicking student getting vengeance on her cruel teacher, and this book featured in Morrowind and every game after. It is of no surprise then that the book, The Mystery of Gargoyle Solved, seems to be fiction also, despite its clickbait title and confident statements. Let's take a look at his main assertions. Tales of gargoyles are widespread across Tamriel, but few can claim to have actually seen one. Have you ever seen one? Has anyone you know ever seen one? 
I didn't think so. However, it is well known that they can be found deep in the depths of the deserts of Hammerfell, hunkering atop crumbling crags as they gaze balefully down upon their potential prey, preparing to dive and rend it with their stony taloned hands. He goes on to claim that these gargoyles are actually the giant goblins that were slain by the Red Guards when they migrated to Hammerfell from Yakuda long ago, stating, Goblins, but giant sized. In other words, great misshapen humanoids, grey green of skin with gnarled, tusked faces, horns, and pointed ears. Take a look at a goblin, then look at a gargoyle. Very well, look at a picture of a gargoyle, because as I believe we've established, none of us have ever seen one in person. It's as plain as their tusky faces that the Hammerfell giant goblins and the Hammerfell gargoyles are, in point of fact, one and the same. From our experience of playing the Dawnguard DLC, we know that this is not the case, and from the Elder Scrolls Online, we also know that the giant goblins that were in Hammerfell were in fact goblins. Gargoyles are certainly their own thing, and they even have wings. Porbet throws shade at this at one point, saying in his text that some are even said to have wings, though the idea of these hulking brutes taking to the air is hard to credit. While gargoyles of slightly varying appearances are found in Hammerfell and other provinces around Tamriel, they're most certainly not goblins. From Volkahar Castle to Dim Hollow Crypt where Serana is found, to Bloodlet Throne, a vampire-filled fort southwest of Helgen, Skyrim's gargoyles are exclusively found in vampire-related locations in the game, and I believe this is no coincidence. Aesthetically, thematically, and in gameplay function, there are many similarities between gargoyles and and vampires. Besides the obvious real-world gothic genre connections, gargoyles look strikingly similar to Skyrim's vampire lords. Bat-like wings with matching spurs protrude from their bony backs. Such wings don't seem to be used to help them fly around, but they actually are used in their forward charge attack to help propel them above the ground temporarily towards a strike on their target. It's not as graceful as the Vampire Lord's ability to hover over flat surfaces for longer distances, but it does show a limited capacity that Vampire Lords also share. They can't take to the sky like a flock of Bonehawks can. Gargoyles possess slender but powerful limbs equipped with dangerously sharp claws, which just like vampire lords, can be used to tear their foes to pieces. Thick necks bolstered by monstrous traps and bulging shoulders sit below a gaping maw of fangs. Bat-like nostril slits and a pair of large bat-like ears cement the vampiric similarities further. Gargoyles also possess a pair of menacing horns, very much on brand for all things Molak Bao, particularly reminding me of his appearance in The Elder Scrolls Online. They even possess a tongue, which in a quest in The Elder Scrolls Online is cut out and used in an antidote to save a man who is trapped in stone. Both gargoyles and vampire lords have a greyish base skin which wraps their sinewy forms from head to toe, although the three gargoyle variants in Skyrim do have slightly different colour schemes depending on their subtype. The ENB we're using with our Skyrim mod setup actually increases these colours that are already there a bit more than usual, so keep that in mind. The standard gargoyle is a greener grey with dark purple areas, particularly around the wings. The gargoyle brute has more of a bluish grey design with slightly red areas around the claws and feet. And the gargoyle sentinel, the strongest of the three, is a pale white, another colour associated with vampires. The standard gargoyle and sentinel variant have greyish black eyes, though the brute has bluish eyes, so keep in mind that the vampiric orange eyes you see throughout the video have been added as part of a mod that helps to make gargoyles look more aesthetic overall, called Rustic Deathhound and Gargoyle by Gamwich. That said, vampire lords have black eyes, not the orange ones associated with vampires in humanoid form, which arguably matches a bit better with vanilla gargoyles anyway. Nevertheless, we do not need matching eyes to see the clear similarities mentioned between these monsters and the vampire lord form. You'll also notice that while gargoyles don't cast spells in Skyrim, they do emanate magical vampiric energy from their claws, which allows them to drain your health like an absorb health enchantment or the vampiric drain spell. They feed off of your energy upon damaging you, and one can only assume such magic falls within the mysterious arcane arts we call blood magic. Blood in the Elder Scrolls universe can be a source of great power. Simply put, the blood of a pure-blooded daughter of Cold Harbor can be used to blot out the sun itself, when shot from Auriel's bow with a blood-cursed elven arrow. If you remember visiting Skyhaven Temple during the Alduin's War Quest, then you probably remember using your own Dragonborn blood on the blood seal to open the entrance. 
Blood magic itself is a dark arcane art that can involve spells, rituals, and even special devices like forges. Different groups have used blood magic for their own benefit around Tamriel, sometimes sacrificing mortals in the process. This vague and mysterious magic doesn't appear to be linked to any one culture or Daedric Prince. In regards to Skyrim, we know blood magic plays a significant part in the magical prowess of the Volcahar vampires. Look at the mighty blood magic shield Harkon places around himself when you face him at the end of the Dawnguard DLC for a great example of its use. There are also the typical vampiric drain type spells we're all familiar with, plus a host of other abilities available to use when Volcahar vampire lords levitate and enter what is referred to in gameplay terms as blood magic mode. There are vampire lord abilities that are night powers such as mist form, and then we have blood magic spells including things like corpse curse to paralyze a target and vampiric grip used to pull a target it to you from a distance and do choking damage before throwing them away. Very importantly, there's a blood magic spell called Summon Gargoyle, which as you'd expect, lets you conjure one of these mysterious monsters to fight for you. There's even special jewelry said to be given to ancient powerful vampire lords by Molag Bao himself, one of which is called the Amulet of the Gargoyle, which allows you to summon two gargoyles. This all begs the question, where are these gargoyles from and how did they come about? I believe that the answer to the second question for the most part, is that these beings were actually built and carved from stone and then imbued with some sort of energy. In Skyrim, we see that Castle Volcahar is home to many disguised gargoyles, but also many genuine ones that seem to be purely decorative and made of stone, indicating that the Volcahar vampires do have the ability to make such statues even for ornamental reasons, or perhaps to keep intruders guessing which ones are real. This means that they could also build the living gargoyles which look identical until they break from their damage resistant stone skin form. Very importantly, when gargoyles are killed in Skyrim, you will notice that they leave behind a variety of random gems and ores. There is no set ore type like Orichalcum always being there for example, which may have hinted that gargoyles might be made from a specific type of material. Instead, the random ores and gems possible to find make it feel as if these hulking statues are carved from any kind of regular rock and the loot they leave behind is the same kind of thing one would gain when mining with a pickaxe. There's also a gargoyle boss cut from the game that we can spawn using console commands who, at least to me, seems to have spikes that look like they're made from some sort of ore, potentially strengthening the whole made from rock theme further. Interestingly, this boss was given a stone skin power to use in battle, which looks really cool. Their initially identical appearance to non-living gargoyles, in addition to the ore and gems they drop, added to the fact that their claws emanate blood magic in combat, shown also in the Gargoyles Legends card art, leads me to believe that these gargoyles are in fact golems created by the Volcahar clan, imbued with the blood magic to give them their monstrous living form. Perhaps gargoyles conserve such energy when sitting in their stone skin forms, only relying on it once they cease to blend in with their environments and decide to attack. But what is a golem exactly? Well, the lines between Atronarchs, that is, Daedric Atronarchs, and Golems can get a bit blurred. Generally speaking, a Golem is any being made from inanimate material and then brought to life using an animus of sorts, be that a mortal soul or a Daedric soul, also known as a vestige. Frastus of Ellen here claims many undead are brought to life using a minor Daedric essence, which can complicate things as you might then assume a skeleton, assembled from bones and then reanimated, is also technically a Golem. It helps when studying the Elder Scrolls lore to avoid getting too rigid when using classifications. A good example of a hard to define being between a golem and an Atronarch is a flesh Atronarch. I highly suggest you watch my video on flesh magic, but long story short, there seems to be two types of flesh Atronarchs, one made in Oblivion's Shivering Isles DLC using a variety of special ingredients such as void essence, niche methods such as carvings on their flesh, and powerful rituals which all lead to a creation seemingly more Daedric in origin. The other flesh Atronarch in Elder Scrolls Online is made by Manamarco's Worm Cult, and it seems to be far more necromantic, likely using a mortal soul or minor essence to power a less complex amalgamation of fleshy body parts brought together in a lab. 
Many see flesh Atronarchs as a type of Daedra, like a fire Atronarch. They can even be summoned, perhaps by pulling the soul or vestige inside it to your current location, and yet, in a way, it's also a kind of golem, isn't it? Perhaps we could say that some Daedra are golems, but not all golems are Daedra. The latter is what seems most applicable to gargoyles. Perhaps summoning a gargoyle as a vampire lord simply involves pulling whatever animus gives them life to your current location. While we could assume that some gargoyles in Tamriel have been imbued with energy unrelated to blood magic, there do seem to be other ties to these dark arts that spread beyond Skyrim, and we'll talk about those soon. Also, when it comes to imbuing stone, there are already beings called stone atronarchs that appear as kind of literal pieces of stone, sometimes sections of ruins, that have been imbued with a Daedric life force. Perhaps in Skyrim's gargoyles, the animus is purely some amount of blood magic trapped within the limitations of a stone form, permanently infused within the body of the creature that results. The Vampire Lords of the Volkahar clan are very skilled in their practice of blood magic, so I wouldn't be surprised if being able to manipulate this energy so well is all they need to be able to grab a hold of a gargoyle's energy and tear it to their side. Whether the gargoyles are pulled from Tamriel or not is hard to say. If so, you'd think their conjured body would remain slain in the mortal plane and not fade away like a regular summon. Of course, this may just be a function of gameplay mechanics, but perhaps summoned gargoyles are pulled from another realm. Many Atronarchs and Golem-like beings are found across a variety of Daedric realms with no specific allegiance, so it makes sense to assume gargoyles could be found in and pulled from other realms. In fact, we know for sure there's a unique gargoyle called the Haunter of the cliffs found in Cold Harbor at the Castle of the Worm specifically. Gargoyles tend to be used to guard certain locations. The subtype Sentinel, meaning a guard whose job is to stand and keep watch, was not chosen thoughtlessly. In fact, there is an enemy you can fight in the Elder Scrolls Online called a more called in Sentinel, one of many warrior statues left to guard a hidden and terrible device known as a Bloodforge. You encounter a variety of living statues like this doing the quest, the Hand of Morkul, and while exploring the grim fate of the Orcish clan who once lived here, you can find Garakul's journal. This journal, combined with the dialogue of the related quest character, Ashaka, reveals that long ago the Morkul clan turned to blood magic through the use of a special forge, which allowed them to use the blood of captives to make weaponry and armor. They were also able to use such magic to create various statue-like guardians, and one very large one positioned on a pedestal guarding the blast furnace is a classic gargoyle like those we find in Skyrim. To me, this provides even more evidence that gargoyles are created or forged through a process that involves imbuing them with blood magic. Garakul's journal also reveals the clan achieved all this while worshipping Mafala, a great example of how blood magic in all its varied forms does not seem to be limited to one Daedric Prince. Gargoyles feature in many provinces in the Elder Scrolls Online, particularly in Hammerfell and High Rock. There's even a gargoyle boss in High Rock named Menir Stoneskin who has some stone Bretons fighting by its side. In High Rock's Spindle Clutch Caverns, you will find many vampire-based enemies, as well as a gargoyle boss literally called Bloodspawn. As you'd expect, gargoyles can also be found within Skyrim's Greymoor Keep, alongside the rest of the vampire-related monstrosities. Gargoyles in the online game are shown to have slightly different designs on occasion, such as a gargoyle found in Elsewhere having more of a Khajiit-like face. There's actually a quest called the Sanguine Successor, in which you must prevent the Khajiiti Holofeng vampires from draining the blood of a captured dragon. These vampires follow the Khajiiti version of Sanguine, called Sangin, who is also known as the Blood Cat. The clan mother of these vampires, Nisazda, will use blood magic to summon Sangin's thirsts, which are, you guessed it, gargoyles. Their entire form is a spectral red, almost as if they are being made entirely from the blood magic that this Khajiit wields. Another thing worth noting is that the Elder Scrolls Online features many other animated statues who don't seem to have anything to do with blood magic and are likely powered by other forces. Some are considered a type of undead, such as the Ankara we see rise from their graves, and the Hollow created by the Wilder King of Valemwood. Gargoyles, on the other hand, are not affected by turn undead spells spells or sun spells in Skyrim and aren't classified as undead in the Elder Scrolls Online either. 
Another fascinating occurrence involving gargoyles comes from a quest in the Elder Scrolls Online that links them further to vampiric power. Two vampires, father and son, are at odds with one another. You can choose if you want to side with the father, Mayon the Ancient, or his son, Valeric. If you decide to side with Valeric and end up fighting Mayon, he will suddenly turn into a gargoyle in the heat of battle. Upon defeat, he remains in gargoyle form. While this specific power is rather mysterious, it does further cement the link between vampires, their blood magic, and gargoyles. A Zenimax interview involving the game's lore master of the time, Lawrence Schick, saw this event questioned. Schick answered questions as the in-game scholar Frastus of Ellen here, explaining his view that because there are so many types of vampire bloodlines and forms of vampiric diseases that the last stage form of it, the so-called vampire lord form, may vary from individual to individual in appearance. This may very well be the case, as vampires can turn into all kinds of things, even taking the place of children in a family after removing the child, in the case of the Telboth vampires of Valenwood. That said, Frastus can be quite the unreliable narrator, so we can't take his view that this was just another vampire lord form as a given. As is often the case, lore added in The Elder Scrolls Online can provide more questions than answers, but from everything we've explored, it seems highly likely that gargoyles are, for the most part, a type of monstrous golem carved from stone and imbued with life, often in the form of blood magic, by the vampires who wield it. In rarer cases, they could arguably be powered by other kinds of animus. Thank you so much for tuning into Fudge Muppet and journeying alongside me on this exploration into gargoyles. If you want to get more Elder Scrolls goodness in your life, you can do so by hitting subscribe. And please do turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on the future videos we've got coming very soon. Let me know all your thoughts on gargoyles in the comments below. Social media links can be found in the description. My name's Michael. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.